Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at the brand new model released by OpenAI, ChatGPT 4.0. You've probably heard about this a lot lately. There's one million videos, but as my first AI video for architecture, I want this to be the feature because there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of great stuff that we have within GPT 4.0 that we did not have within 4. So it's a brand new model. There's a lot to cover. I will cover it really quickly. But first I want to say, if at any point in this video, you happen to learn something or just like this kind of content, please demolish that like button. Really helps me out a lot. Also do consider subscribing. That helps as well. Okay, so I have not made an AI video as much as I love and use AI, but for some reason now, I feel that this is actually really important. And a few reasons why that I'll get into it as we go through some of the features that we have within GPT 4.0, because yeah, it's, it's just that impactful. And this is kind of the, the groundbreaking point, I think, for AI and architecture. I really want to focus on AI and architecture specifically. And more specifically than that, I don't want to be just another channel that shows you how to use Dolly. I don't want to show you how to make images like that's great. And there's some really useful tools when it comes to making materials and everything like that, which we might cover, but I want to be the place where you might go for AI and architecture that isn't, Oh, look at my pretty picture that AI made for me that don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that, but I want to be everything else. And my hope is that I will provide enough value that you might want to stick around. Okay. GPT 4.0. What is that? Well, the O means Omni, and you can read more about that here. I'm just on the basic GPT 4.0 kind of launch page, and we have a, more of a blog to look at in here in just a second, but I would highly encourage you to look through these different use test videos that OpenAI does and covers the crazy stuff. And basically we have different models that we can now interact with. And basically this new version allows us to not only talk, but the model itself can can talk back, it can hear you, it can see what's going on, it can respond to everything. It's basically like you're talking to your own personal assistant. It's insane. So that, I will say, does not apply specifically to architecture itself. Obviously, it can kind of apply to everything. But what I wanted to get into is some of these capabilities down here. And a lot of these things may not be directly, again, directly related to architecture, but you could start to see like, oh, you know, I can use this in this workflow. I can, I could use this to speed things up, give me more options here, whatever it might be. So exploration of capabilities. And this is just the new capabilities of the 4.0 model. Text to font, we can see, we can scroll through all of these things, but what I want to do is pick out a few to give you an idea of what to expect. So poster creation, it's taking these two guys and saying, hey, make a movie poster using this prompt. And <laughs> it ultimately gives you this poster. So like, again, the image is great. Don't care about that as much as some of the other things. One thing I really, really enjoy is this 3D object synthesis. And so basically we're saying, hey, create an image and create like five more. So like you, you're taking six images and you're taking those six images and creating a 3D object from it. Now, again, I, does that apply directly to architecture? Maybe it does. We're kind of getting into the photogrammetry world here where we actually receive some sort of a 3D model. Now, I believe me, I'll be the first one to post a video on prompt to an actual 3D model that looks good. There's there's some iffy ones out there, but this is kind of a way of piecemealing really high quality images together to create what kind of might be a 3D model. Now, what we don't know is the output here as it actually looks like a video and animation. It may not be an OBJ or an object file or any sort of 3D file that we can download and use in our model. So nonetheless, this is one step in the right direction. There are a couple of other things here. You know, you can start to see different stacking cubes, the way that lurks. Character design, you can describe a character doing things. So again, these, this is image prompting, which is, is great. I love that. The text to font is cool. You know, you can start to get specific looking fonts based on the text you write. Something I am really impressed of is it is these images, at least, are able to work with text quite well, like even better than Midjourney. And I don't know if you remember when Midjourney and all, all of these different image prompters, AI image prompters came out and every piece of image that you saw was just gobbledygook, probably some sort of alien language that we've yet to decipher. But everything we see here, you can literally specify what you want it to say. And you can even see here that it is updating the prompt to say, well, this robot that typed this poetry out on this paper doesn't like it. So it ripped it in half, but it kept all the words as if it were actually ripping the paper in half. It's very impressive. So I, you could see how this can be useful in architecture, more from an iterating standpoint. And if you want to add text, obviously text is great. 
I would highly recommend you look at all of these just to see what it can do and specifically watch these videos to give you an idea of where things are going. Okay, so that's kind of the really big overhead of the release of GBT 4.0. Now, something else within the release is, this is basically just their blog post of it, and this will kind of cover everything that we just talked about with GBT 4.0. But what I want to do is bring you down here, and this is nothing new to what OpenAI has offered with GPT-4, but basically everything up until the new model of GPT-4.0 will now be free, which is amazing. So I have been reluctant to pay for GPT-4 despite my love for AI and everything I've used. I've used the Playground and the API in various different places. So I've used GPT-4, just not within OpenAI platform itself. But now I will be able to go to GPT and OpenAI and use just a regular old GBT and not have to use the free 3.5 model, which it's very much lacking in the sense that, you know, if you're familiar with GPT-4, highly recommend looking at that first because that's what we will now have access to. So the few things that we have, are obviously GPT-4 itself, responses from the web, that's basically the main feature of GPT-4. It's better than 3.5, but also it has access to web and the web history up until a certain point. You can check that date specifically. You can analyze data, you know, input data, input files, talk about photos that you include, obviously create photos with Dolly 3 and not just 2. But the main thing here I, I love is create and use the GPT store. That's amazing. So that yeah, very quickly, the GPTs specifically in the, that fall within the GPT store are basically like a compressed version, a prompt or something, a command or something specific that you make to do a very specific task. And the idea is that maybe we have one that's set up to do building codes or look through building codes for a specific year or just a specific trade or, you know what I mean? Obviously the results here could be endless, but, and Please be careful with everything you do with that. But when it comes to the GPT store, all of that will be free now and useful to literally everyone, which is amazing. So that is something that you can expect from this channel. And then finally, memory. So part of the problem with using some of these different models is that they haven't been able to remember what you've talked about in the past. So you bring something up and it's not taking account what you might have prompted in the past or used in the past or uploaded in the past. But the memory feature specifically within GPT-4 is a pretty recent release, but it just adds so much. Basically, you want to not only give multiple examples when you're prompting to get the best result, but you want to be able to take past results and kind of iterate on top of that. So probably going to come out with videos in the future covering more of the prompting specifically to some of these things that we're kind of trying to cater to in architecture, not necessarily for images again, but nonetheless, I wanted to inform you of chat GPT 4.0. Oh, it's, it's very, very impressive. And I can't wait to start using this. I can't wait. It looks like in the next day or two, we should have the ability to go from the free side to chat GPT 4 as opposed to just 3.5. So I am very excited for that. And that's what I'm looking forward to the most, obviously using 4.0 too, but definitely. I would highly recommend you look at other videos that do kind of do a compare and contrast the differences between 4 and 4.0, some of the performance. It's wild. It's great. It's obviously much faster, but besides faster, the quality is just 10 times better. I, I'm making that number up, but it's a magnitude better, at least in my opinion. So I go check out other videos and definitely let me know what you think of AI and architecture. If we're talking about AI and architecture specifically, besides all of the image generation, render generation, all this kind of stuff. I want to, I don't want to be that resource for you because there's plenty of those and it's a bit exhaustive. So if you think AI can be useful in architecture in ways other than that, I'm really curious what you think. And obviously let me know what you think of GPT-4. I'm really excited about it. We all just gained the new personal assistant, it basically looks like. So if you haven't enjoyed this video, please demolish that like button. Really helps. Also consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching.